Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Dual Screens podcast. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a good one. I feel this game looks all sorts of crazy. Joining me this week is Jordan Moki, creator of Conscript, an upcoming survival horror game inspired by the classics of the genre, set in 1916 during the Great War. Fantastic war. <laughs> Jordan, welcome to the show. How's it going, buddy? I'm good. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me. It's good to be here. It's a weird thing. The Great War. Mm-hmm. That I'm term always word. always got me it's a little strange. Terrible, like, actually. <laughs> yeah, like in, in in history class, I was always like, "Why is this thing called the Great War?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they thought that it would be the uh, the last war or the war to end all. Right, wars. right. Uh, well, you know how a- that went. So if a war can spawn a game that looks this good, then there's something great <laughs> about it, might it be, obviously. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god, the dog is like in the background whining. I love it already. We're off to a great start. Right. So mine will, uh, probably, mine will probably go off any second. Now, <laughs> so there could be two of them. <laughs> um, before we get into the game and how amazing it looks and all that fun stuff, I do want to kind of get your reaction. Four years you're working on this game. And then, bam, you're part of Gamescom, IGN, Awesome Indies. Walk yeah. me through the emotional reaction seeing your game just, like, up there on a huge platform for the world to sort of see for the first time. What was that like for you? Oh, my God. It was <laughs> it, it was it was crazy. It's just been such a crazy, like, um, three, four months now mm. because of those kind of events. Um, Oh man, it was it was just crazy because, like you said, it's just been such a such a grind. Like so many years, kind of doing this with not you know not that much recognition. Like I, I do have quite a few fans, which is which is good. But in the grand yeah. scheme of things, it's not like I'm not massive yet. <laughs> so to, to have um, to have it displayed, I can't remember what what the uh, what the amount of viewers was live, but it was definitely in the like multiple tens of thousands. Right, and um. I it, it, it broadcasted at like I think it was like three or four a.m. here, so I had to get up early, and I was just like half asleep. And the adrenaline from it woke me up pretty quickly, though. And yeah, I was just watching the trailer uh, run live on IGN, and uh, I made the mistake of like reading the comments. Yeah, like, I was gonna was say that's, that's a risky move. Like, it's one yeah, thing to not, like uh, here's yeah. like my trailer, like put it on your yeah. channel and just like show up for promotion whenever you want. Not here's a live show where people are brutal in the comment section and yeah. <laughs> generally piss on non triple a games. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I, yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. I was reading it and people were going, where's battlefield 2042. And I was like, guys, this is an indie show. <laughs> like, didn't you read like the schedule clearly said that this was the indie show and you guys are just this isn't Grand Theft Auto thumb, six. Thumb, yeah, exactly. You, you guys are uh, thumbing it down because it's not um, battlefield, but I think once that wave of people kind of dissipated in, and then when they like uploaded the video separately in the channel, mm-hmm. you know, their the response was like really amazing because you have people with like normal IQ levels. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You know, with like um, really no good reading comprehension all people skills. Just, yeah. The non-smooth yeah. brained individuals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, nah, it was, all in all, the, the response was really good, um, mm. and I was just—it was such a like a, a weight off my shoulders because like I'm not very good at well, first of all, I'm not very good at making trailers or like the whole marketing aspect of things. It's not something that I enjoy mm. or like look forward to, but it's kind of just something that I've had to force myself to to do because I don't I don't, I've spent so much time with this and I don't want to don't want it to fail. So um, yeah, I'm not particularly good at it, but. It kind of paid off in that instance, so I'm, I'm glad that I kind of put the work in and made that trailer and got all that stuff done. But yeah, it was good. All in all, it was good to, to answer the question. <laughs> right, and you know, you don't have this huge publishing arm like to no. go to bat for you to get you on exactly that showcase. Yeah. What was that even like? Even getting your game a chance in the spotlight? Is it yeah. you reaching out to them saying, "Hey, here's my game. You have this thing coming," or do they like curate their own? So the of indies in a sense it's it is submission based um mm. 
I couldn't even remember that I signed up for it, to be honest. I think the submissions <laughs> was like months and months before, as these things usually are. And I just got this email, like, because I, I sign up for as many things as I can. I think mm. that's what you should be doing as an indie is just basically right. like, um, you know, throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and just see what sticks. Because the reality is, is you're going to be rejected by like nine out of 10 of these events. And I have exhausting. Been. Yeah, it is. It's really demoralizing. <laughs> it's, 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 it's terrible. It's terrible. And you got to do that um, and make your game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then when you get rejected, it's hard not to feel like your game's worthless and you're wasting your time. Like, you know what I mean? It's just the way it goes. Um, but you just got to keep like, just keep signing up. And some of, some of them are paid as well. And sometimes then sometimes you waste money mm. just <laughs> submitting. And it's just like, but these are just the things you got to do. And um, eventually one of them, you know, will pick it up. And I was very lucky that it was IGN. Like that was, that was crazy. Um, because Lord knows I've been rejected a lot of times submitting to big shows like that. You um, should go back in all the lesser shows and be like, listen, guys, IGN said, yeah, so you can suck, <laughs> suck a big fat wet one while you're at it. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm tempted. Uh, don't worry. Uh, don't worry. I remember <laughs> everybody who rejected me in, in any capacity oh like any, <laughs> along this whole indie process, like whether it's publishers, whether it's shows like i remember i'll never God. forget so. you're like you're like um it's like the michael jordan meme like <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I took, yeah, so yeah. i took it personally <laughs> yeah exactly yeah but it, it, it's it's hard not to when it's when it's your when it's your game that you've been working mm. on for so long you know it's like i understand like you know how a lot of indie developers have mental breakdowns <laughs> like because it's just it's hard. It's hard. And it's right. it's hard not to take everything personally, but you, you do have to kind of divorce yourself from these things because, you know, it is, right. there are so many indie games and you're going to miss out. Like It's a lot. It. And it pains me that a game that looks this well-produced and is, it's, it ticks off all my boxes. It has mm. that kind of classic PSX aesthetic to it. It's survival horror. And I had no idea it was a thing until I saw this trailer at the show. Oh, so you, you saw it at uh, IGN? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Because awesome. I was yeah. like, what is this game? Why haven't I heard it before? It, mm. I, I was like, cool. I was mad at myself for not knowing it existed. <laughs> yeah. Because I try yeah, to keep easy. an eye out yeah. for these things. Again, there's just so yeah, many things yeah. to follow. And Exactly. Yeah. So easy. let's get to the game. I kind of yeah. gave a little brief summation about what is your elevator pitch? For what conscript is well it's um it's simply just a world war one <laughs> uh, survival horror game that's mm. that's what it is it's a top-down world war one survival horror game um that's as simple as it gets and that's like a pretty accurate description as well so. right one of the things that i mean it's the aesthetic that grabs you when you first see when you first see it in action it's it has that playstation one kind of vibe it, it i feel like it's taking sound effects right from resident evil mm. like when you're walking on the wooden floors the reloading the yep. bullet yep. going firing off your gun i feel like if my eyes were shut someone's playing <laughs> the resident evil yeah 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 that's yeah. what it well, sounds like to me yeah that's that's that was the goal it was really <laughs> focused on the sound design because it's such an important part of Slumber yeah Horror. even like yeah, things like the footsteps. You know, these are these are little things that I guess people don't most people don't really notice, but if they weren't there, you would also notice because it makes such a big difference to the mm. overall package, the sound design and just making sure sound effects are like really crunchy and um, so yeah, you're right. And then doing this whole top down perspective, it, it reminds me of like those really polished, like late late generation Game Boy Advance kind of games mm, in a sense yeah, yeah, also. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like some really wild and funky stuff going yeah, on. So yeah. <laughs> it, it was honestly, it was all just kind of an accident. Like I didn't really, uh, how do I put this? Like I never really envisioned the game to ever end up like this, but it, mm. it was just kind of a mix of things that like the art style, for example, was just something that I just kind of stumbled upon. And then I just found that it, it worked and it was manageable for me. That was the most important thing was that it was manageable um, because this is my first game and right. you know i couldn't really be bothered it's not that i could be bothered i just didn't have time to start learning 3d and all that because when i first envisioned getting into game development what i um was seeing in my mind was 
you know, like 3D, like a, a fixed camera style game mm. like the old Resident Evils. Right. But I just, there was just way too much to learn. And I just, you know, kind of settled on this top down um, art style, which I'm glad I did because I feel like it's pretty unique. Mm. Um, so I feel like it kind of worked out for the best. Uh, even though at first I was like, oh, I wish this was 3D, but I think it all worked out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen so many games that try to just mimic or emulate that fixed camera tank control style of classic ps1 it's a very horror which is great but then to see your game which is like you know what i think i'm gonna go in a little bit of a different direction kind mm. of accidentally as it yeah, were but yeah. still i think it really comes through like yeah, it's effective. yeah i mean yeah because it is kind of the i don't want to say fashionable but it is kind of the thing that a lot of indie developers are doing now is mm. you know ps1 style uh art styles which i love like i really yeah. love nothing nothing I'm against it at all huge fan yeah it's awesome I, I love it and like i said that's what i originally wanted the game to be but um there is a co- quite a bit of it now but mm-hmm. you know what it's i like it so <laughs> there's a lot of it but it exists in its own little like bubble yeah, in right. a very special yeah. corner on itch.io that's true that's true but like and again seeing this kind of style in a big indie show i was like oh shit like people notice that this art style still exists yeah Yeah, let's not forget it because it's (laughs) i think it's one of my favorite aesthetics in gaming like that lo-fi kind of vibe where things are just crunchy enough that you can't tell what the hell it is at some Mm. points Mm -hmm. and for horror especially it lends it so well yeah, exactly yep so what are we doing in this game what's the basic gist walk us to the, the core gameplay of conscript what does that look like yeah i mean the core gameplay loop is really much like those old survival horror games you're um exploring first and foremost exploration is like the most important part of any survival horror game you're you know resource managing finding items um surviving <laughs> fighting enemies um surviving you know, horror you know guns. the usual yeah surviving the horror <laughs> that's what you're doing um yeah so it's it's yeah that, that's that's it surviving collecting uh items and, and, and ammo and although they will be scarce mm. and planning your way around the map and obviously there's a story and the story is you know you're trying to find your missing in action brother during the battle of the gun mm. uh, as a french soldier so that's like the overarching you know uh, motivation but Everything there is pretty much classic survival horror. Yeah, there's even like a little bit of a Resident Evil 4 merchant dude going yeah, on yeah, as well. Yeah, That's yeah. like yeah, yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, I had to I had to put him in. I was like, he, he was actually um he was actually a stretch goal for back when I did the Kickstarter that didn't even actually reach, but I was like, nah, I got stuff man. I, I gotta put him in. Like he's too good not to put in. And I just had this character in my mind and I just love I love the merchant from uh, four and and eight. I just think it's such a it's such a cool mechanic. Yeah, the one in eight really grew on me. Yeah, yeah. Because like yeah. I love fours, but like eight was just yo. Yeah, that's how awesome. you that's how you evolve yeah. that concept. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this yeah. giant like blob of a dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a that's an accurate description. <laughs> I'm always curious to ask this of folks who are special enough to create horror titles because it is a very yep. difficult genre to pull off how do you know when your game is scary mm. what's what's the telltale sign for you because i'm sure mm. you consume tons of horror media like yeah your entire life. Again, i feel like most horror devs i have a, like a kinship with like you grew up on horror i would imagine watching yeah, horror movies playing horror games do you know what it takes what the formula could be to mm. scare someone but how do you know what you're creating is scary yeah it's it's hard because when you work on something for so long you just become completely numb to it mm. and like <laughs> completely numb to it like, i can't even stress it enough like I, I can't really even tell what's good and what's bad anymore or what's scary and what's not scary because I, you know, I see this every day. I work on it every day. But um, there's, a, there's a few things, I think. 
like I said, sound design is one of them and I'm pretty confident in my sound design abilities. Um, atmosphere, which also ties into sound design. Mm. Um, I guess even making sure that those core survival horror gameplay mechanics are solid also mm. in turn uh, kind of influences how scary the game is because when you're strapped for ammo and you're strapped for resources, like you're and the, and the stakes are higher, the, the player is going to be more scared uh, intrinsically, if that makes sense. Right, right, right. Um, but apart from that, it's, still, it's also just a lot of uh, feedback and... But like you said, when, when you've kind of played all these games to death, all the classic Star Wars games since you were a kid, you kind of just know in a, in a weird way. Like, I, I can't even really pinpoint it, but I just kind of know what will work from a survival horror sense and what mm. won't well even if i don't know 100 percent, like i have a pretty good ballpark of what will work now that, that's a, that's a kind of a vague answer but it's hard to sure, describe yeah. <laughs> yeah it is it is because like yeah invoking genuine terror is it comes from within so it's it's yeah. a matter of doing that as you're creating you get that sense like this this yeah. is gonna work yeah and, i know um, this another, will work yeah yeah and uh the setting as well for me has been like very important in mm. in in doing that because yeah the whole reason i settled on world war one was because it was like absolutely terrifying mm. um like the conditions just what even just watching footage it's just like it was a really horrific war uh it was brutal um so being able to kind of just study history and read like uh, read accounts and read journals and read letters and all that. I mean, for me personally, like that's, that's scarier than any kind of, you know, ooga booga, scary monster that yeah. I could like make <laughs> ooga, up. Ooga. Like, <laughs> uh, I love it. <laughs> so yeah, I just, that, that's also another kind of selling point of the game is that the horror comes from the setting and it comes from right. the history and it comes from, it comes from, yeah, the setting. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was trying to search like in my brain for horror games that that are set during a war, and I really couldn't think of any that it's came not, to mind yeah, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we had the cliche, the spooky mansion, the sleepy town. Yeah, exactly. You know, teenagers. You know, yeah. at a at a campsite, like all the cliches, all the stereotypes that. You know, which are exactly. great and are effective, but you would think during a war, it's it's horrific. It's like the yeah. perfect grounds for it to tell a really great horror story. Yeah, exactly right. Because you don't have to make anything up. And I was like pretty, when I first started this whole, pro, not when I started the process, but when I first settled on the fact that I was going to do a war theme horror game, mm -hmm. like I was genuinely like shocked that this hadn't existed yet. Mm. um like hadn't existed properly and i was even shocked that i was able to get the conscript name to be honest i thought that would have been taken by some game that's a pretty dope name too i might add yeah yeah i'm, I'm really happy with it i love that because it's so <laughs> yeah, yeah. aggressive yeah you yeah. know it's like oof Tingle. and you can also <laughs> like you know i don't want to look too far into the future obviously because like i've got so long. <laughs> i can't even look past today like <laughs> to be honest with you i've just always done so much work with it, but if everything goes to plan, you know, it would be my dream to like keep uh, keep making conscript games and, and turn it into a franchise and explore oh, yeah. all different kinds of wars because it's not just dependent on the World War One theme. Conscript can be applied to any any war ever, really. So, mm -hmm. well, listen, Jordan, I don't want to like get your hopes up. Uh, coming on this show <laughs> brings some level of success. I've made it. <laughs> playing right now. Fall guys, Splitgate, some big, some big Damn. names that were on the show when they were not too huge, and then fame struck. Just saying. <laughs> Mom, I made it. Mom. Yeah, I would make a short list of yacht names. I'm just. That's all I'm gonna yeah, tell yeah, you. Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. I'm gonna tell you. Um, what? <laughs> what? What led you to this particular setting? Was it always in the back of your mind, or was it just? I want to make a horror game, but then, okay, what can I, where do I go? 
with the desire to make a horror game? So hmm. it was, I, I always kind of had my mindset on a horror game. Mm. And to be honest with you, that's purely because when I first started learning game development, I was just playing a lot of horror games at the time. Yes. And, you know, I, I do love the genre like I always have, but it was just kind of a coincidence that that was this just, I was going through like a horror game marathon at the time. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? This would just uh, seem like a fun game to make fun style of game to make. So I always had that idea of making a horror game at first. And then, cause at the time I was also studying um, history at there university. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it just kind of naturally kind of fell into my hands in a way. Cause I was, I was trying to settle on a time period or trying to settle on a, on a setting. And at first I wanted to just like do a whole bunch of things completely out of scope for a one man team. Like I wanted mm -hmm. to, have the player like time travel and go through oh god <laughs> yeah and it was just like <laughs> i tried that for like a month and i was like this is just ridiculous and <laughs> then i was like i have to settle on a um on a setting and i've always been really fascinated with world war one because mm -hmm. yeah like i said it was just so uniquely horrific and so i just thought yeah and and i, and I was like there's really not many games this is such an underutilized uh, time period in games yeah everyone's done world war ii exactly oh. it's a very underrated yeah, war yeah. you know it gets no credit yeah yeah i agree you know, if I you agree. got no it's hitler no one cares about it that's yeah exactly that's what it that's seems what it like <laughs> yeah I, I, yeah when there's no like binary good and evil people just right like right it anymore. <laughs> it's like yeah um so yeah it's just kind of naturally happened and then once i started like making the first kind of test maps like in the trenches and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, this is, this is it. Yeah. This is so, the one. This is the one. What are, what games do you look to for inspiration when you're crafting your vision for horror? The classics, always mm. the classics, the, uh, the Resident Evils, specifically uh, one, two, the classics, so one to three, and I'm also throwing in a bit of four mm. into Conscript as well, because well for a while i kind of struggled with the fact that because the, the game takes place in a war and spoiler alert there's no zombies it's like there's no there's no there's no supernatural creatures at all so right. it's just going to be basically human versus human right and <laughs> the real monsters that's <laughs> the real monsters yeah 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 <laughs> and generally speaking humans don't like shuffle around and like walk really slowly towards the player and like try to eat their brains so the combat had to be a bit more fast paced to compensate mm. and that's where i'm kind of taking cues from like resident evil 4 right um so it's just a bunch of it's just a big mixture of everything that i love from classic survival horror games a lot of atmosphere from silent hill mm. a lot of sound design from silent hill as well and um you know even i know the dark wood comparison gets thrown out there a lot Mm -hmm. and, which is like awesome to be compared to because I, I haven't actually finished that game but i have absolutely loved what i've played um so that comparison gets thrown in there a lot and yeah that's just the classics is the answer how how do you go about developing ai for human enemies in a horror game because i feel <laughs> zombies monsters might be a little bit easier to yeah to get in there but now you're dealing with what's supposed to be human adversaries who can have higher brain functions hopefully and can yeah. be more cunning <laughs> than your average zombie or your you know rotting yeah. corpse of a dog how does that look on the design end well there's a lot of like me slamming my head against the desk really <laughs> right <laughs> really violently and like <laughs> losing a lot of brain cells <laughs> ai has been the hardest by so far, there is one the zombie hardest. then <laughs> yeah i'm the zombie yeah spoiler alert the developer is the zombie <laughs> um ai has been the hardest the hardest part to like design so it, it has been a headache and like 80 percent of the bugs <laughs> ever in like the the past demos has been purely because of the ai um oh boy yeah it's, it's been especially because like i said I'm, I'm this is my first ever game so i'm just kind of making everything up as i go and just learning on the spot and like like i've never programmed ai systems before so I've had to kind of just 
somehow work out how to do this stuff. But anyway, um, the question was, how do I go about making yeah. humans, right? To better understand. How did you so do I, it? I, I go on a lot of tangents. <laughs> That's totally fine. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, obviously zombies are slow. They kind of dumb. So one thing that I wanted to, it's, it's such a hard balance because you want the player to feel overwhelmed because there's going to be fast, there's going to be a lot of fast paced enemies moving towards them. But you also don't want it to be too realistic in mm. that they're just going to get surrounded and like killed instantly, which was a design kind of issue I was having with the last demo where at the first few patches, it was a bit too hard where I think the enemies were a bit too fast, a bit too aggressive and people were having mm. a hard time. So there's a few um, small things you can do like, you know, I, I kind of got all these uh, design ideas from Resident Evil 4 where even though the player is surrounded, only really one or two enemies at a time will actually approach the player mm. and the rest will kind of just hang back and just kind of right. look threatening in the background. Mm. Um, so I've kind of tried to do things like that to balance it. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think what else Resident Evil 4 does. It, it's, it's mainly just like the illusion of being surrounded. Right. Whereas, yeah, only you, the players only really engaging with like one or two at a time, right. and then when you when you kill, the, I, I you know, like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you kill one, you know, the next two will come or whatever. And um, yet, somehow, in all of that war setting, human opponents, guns a blazing, it doesn't feel like an action game at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's what I was hoping. Um, that's what I was hoping because it is such a hard balance to to strike because. <laughs> The minute that you start adding things like sprinting, which I did, mm. and like um, and like dodging, then people just subconsciously kind of think that it's an action game. Mm. So it's been really hard to balance. Like, how do I add these mechanics and, and keep it fast paced, but also also make sure that players are aware that this is like Rambo Simulator, right? You know? So that that has been hard, but I, I feel like I've kind of struck a good balance. Uh, right now right because you know the issue there is like the second it can it strays towards an action game your brain goes in a different area completely exactly yeah and it yep. says well now i'm just trying to get through a horde of enemies and the fear is removed entirely exactly. from the equation yep. yeah exactly so when's it coming out <laughs> <laughs> the big question <laughs> when's when's this the bad boy question. coming out <laughs> yeah i mean i'm i'm not committing to it to a hard and fast date mm -hmm. again because I've done, I've done that before and just i am a one-man team and the problem with being a one-man team is that life happens and when life happens it's not like anyone else can pick up you know where i've left off right but um, it's just but, you and and you and you yeah. there's no like <laughs> yeah. someone like where's your game jordan it's like no that is true that Look is at true, mirror, jordan we're gonna push back to date okay jordan yeah that's 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 that is true but there's also a lot of self-inflicted uh pressure mm. as a solo developer there is a lot of most of the pressure is from myself like i'll admit that <laughs> like and i know that i'm trying to trying to get better at managing that but yeah self-imposed um, crunch Working like crazy it, it hours. Is. <laughs> it, it, well, it is. It, it literally is. Because um, when when you've when you're trying to, oh, I'm about to go off another tangent. I'll answer, I'll answer the it. release date question first. <laughs> you're trying to um, avoid the release date question. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, look, it's 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 going to be next year sometime. Whether that's fair enough. Yeah, whether that's like Q2 or Q3 or Q4, I don't know. It just depends. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work really hard over Christmas and try to get as much done as I possible. I can but... start bothering you on January 1st, 2022. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I don't, it's, it sounds like, you know, it's what everyone says, but it'll be out when it's ready and when I'm like 100% confident in it because, yeah, nothing, nothing good happens when, when you're rushing these things and, yeah <laughs> yeah people are a lot less forgiving these days i feel like you know recently with um yeah. cy cyberpunk yeah. and then yeah. just the other day with that grand theft auto the trilogy GTA. yeah holy yeah. shit yeah i i, I kind of love to see it in a lot of ways because 
Yeah. I yeah. love when the big guys kind of fail on that level. Yeah. So like, do I, because then, yeah, you're right. Then it spreads <laughs> down and, and everyone realizes it's like, oh, it's best we just wait. There's so many games anyway. It's like. <laughs> right. You know. And I was watching some videos and I was just cracking up. Like, I'm just going to put these on the old emulator and yeah. play them <laughs> in a much better quality. Yeah. How was that rain? I couldn't, I couldn't. Get oh my God. Rain. The rain it was like yeah. raining, like, like yeah. pins. <laughs> I was yeah. like, what is yeah. this? <laughs> See, that's 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 real horror right there that's that is true horror yeah that i should do true that horror. That's true. just the player can't say anything <laughs> yeah you no know, it's it's odd like again you mentioned there's no supernatural components or but you would think war psychological trauma you could you could sort of lean into that a little bit with some yeah, spooky yep. imagery and I've thought about it a lot. Yeah. I have thought about it a lot. Yeah. Um, there is there is a lot that can be done. But and you know what? I still might. I still might. So you never know. But you know what you gotta do though. I think given your inspirations of the PS1 era, specifically of horror, is you need like some sort of goofy unlockable outfit. Like a two, like a, like a two, <laughs> oh yeah, like a two-piece <laughs> bikini, some like death laser yeah. gun. Yeah, at, like at your fourth playthrough, there will be a lot of crazy weapons. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one thing I miss the most. Like playing Silent Hill like four times for a chainsaw. Yeah, well, nowadays or a katana behind DLC. Aren't yeah, they? all those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or it's a pre-order bonus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Man, I would. Uh, I used to work I got, for my bonuses back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same. Same. Don't worry, I'll get you covered. I'll get you covered. Good. <laughs> um, what what's it like when you're designing a game with no there's no oversight because it's you're yep. you're a one man team essentially, and there's no publisher to say, you know what, that idea is too far. When do you know when you've taken things too far? <laughs> or yeah. have you not reached that point yet? Is it just all of my uh, ideas are great, and I don't care what anyone says. No, no, no. Some, uh, some of my ideas are not great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, time travel notwithstanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was the worst. <laughs> um, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. I guess hmm, scope creep is always, is always something that you have to watch mm, for because... Yep. You always do want to add that extra mechanic, yeah, or add mm. that extra thing. And I probably have been guilty of that a little bit in the past, but I do feel like now I've kind of got that perfect set of mechanics where I'm really happy with it. And adding anything more will just, well, first of all, it, it will just make bugs, which I don't want to fix. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, I guess, as long as, as I'm adhering to the kind of theme of, of war themed horror hmm. then i'm good but that's a good question yeah yeah like i've always heard this term like developers they always want to extend the player like they don't want to they kind of they want to build on an existing set of ideas and mechanics that you can just stretch out mm -hmm. but not build a lot of new things that sort of interrupt or go against mm. the initial foundation yeah yeah but again you know don't want to put like flight or <laughs> some weird yeah, shit yeah, like yeah yeah of course <laughs> um, no this game needs farming that's what it needs <laughs> <laughs> it, need, it needs an anime protagonist then i'll probably get double the sales <laughs> it needs some sort of monster taming component <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah where i'm putting uh pow's in cages and yeah, i make them yeah. fight in this oh, weird mini game on, yeah <laughs> Pokemon style. <laughs> See, those yeah. are the best ideas. Yeah, yeah. The exactly. worst ideas are the best ideas. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> like the sky, I'm like the sky mall of bad ideas, Jordan. So yeah. it's just, <laughs> you've come to the right place. That's right. I'm, I'm guilty. Like I said, the time travel thing, that was just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I'm, has, I'm guilty of it myself. Yeah. Right. <laughs> given that your game has been given a much bigger platform with the recent yep. showing at Gamescom. Have folks reached out to you on the publishing side to, to oh, yeah. 
to like, yeah. hey, we, we want to put your game in our library and make it ours. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's it's quite a few at this point, mm. which I'm, which is good, good, good position to be in, mm -hmm. and, and I'm grateful for that. Um, but to be honest, so it's really hard to. As a, as a one man team, it's really hard to know what the best route going forward is. I'm, I'm, I've kind of been at a bit of a crossroads mm. over the past few weeks, um, deciding what I want to do because mm. I've kind of proven to myself that I am capable of doing everything. But at the same time, I also know that my mental energy is only so finite. And right. by the time this is done, like I might not be able to do everything by myself, uh, if that makes sense. So that's when I will yeah. have a look look for help um yeah and what else because making yeah. the game is like a small part of game development there's marketing yeah. there's exactly it's like yeah. here you finished your game after like four years great now the real work starts yeah it's exactly like, excuse it's... me i just spent the last four years of my life consumed exactly. in this project eating it yep. shitting it every day yep. <laughs> <laughs> and now i have to like yeah. go to like events yeah. and talk about it constantly and yeah, yeah memorize a script god That's exactly right yeah it's like it's like when i tell people like in my real life um you know that, like or if i like meet someone that you know i haven't spoken to since high school or something and you know you tell each other what you're doing and oh game development like they, they think that they think that it's like playing minecraft or something and that like 100 percent of it is just like placing a I want to put a tree here like that design part of it is like so little <laughs> like compared to all the other stuff you have to do like i wish that's what it was right um i wish that's what it was but that is like <laughs> between like the programming the marketing the sound that is like such a small part of it um although i am kind of at the part now where most of my effort is going to be concentrated towards that which is good mm -hmm. i have to kind of retrain myself how to be creative which is mm -hmm fun um but yeah it's just it's, it's, it's so much to it there's, there's so much to it yeah and you know like the trade shows are coming back in effect next year i just got my pax yeah. east mm. uh notification like hey it's coming back after two years i was like oh my god i miss i miss meeting devs on the show floor mm. yeah and just hearing them speak about their games but like it's like 60 percent enthusiastic because they're, they're just so worn down from the weekend <laughs> like, yeah here's yeah. my game yeah. like here's yeah, the, the same <laughs> my, the same six lines i've said to like yeah every yeah. person every half hour of the day yeah for the last two days yeah, yeah get so ready. Actually, i don't want to discourage you but get ready for that yeah yeah so i, I was supposed to be at pax australia um, mm -hmm. in october but because of the last lockdown that was cancelled um it just replaced with like an, an online thing which was still good but so i haven't actually had that I haven't had that experience yet, but um, it'll come. It'll come eventually, which I'm looking forward to. Australia is um, like bananas with their lockdowns. I've, I've yeah, seen dude. some videos on like, is that the current year? It's, it looks like old prison footage. Uh, yeah, it's it's like <laughs> I don't know what's going on I, over there. I, I, I don't I don't want to get too political. Yeah, this, just... this this was this is this is the most lockdown city uh, in the world. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> And then I told you it was weird. Then they just opened. It was like we yeah. reached the vax target. And then it was just bang, everything's open. And I was like, right. sitting there like, yeah, I was like, I forgot how to socialize. Like, help me. <laughs> like, everything was back open. Gyms, this and that. And like, I didn't, I didn't even know how to react. It was like really, it was really, it was a really harsh adjustment to go from right like six weeks of locked up and then just bang. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, here yeah, I spent like I spent like two years basically working from home. And I'm doing like a massive air quotes under the table right now that you can't see. And then now we're just getting back to a regular schedule. And I feel like yep. it's such an imposition on my life. Like, how dare you ask me to come to the office five days a week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it you can't do adjustment. that. Yeah. I've, I've, yeah. <laughs> this is, my life is napping till four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, 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 an email yeah. or two. Yeah. How dare you take that well, away from me? <laughs> yeah. The way I see it is like, as long as the work gets done, mm. Yeah. Then the work gets done. That's yeah. that's my opinion. But yeah, and I the work will get done. So. <laughs> and you will make yeah. your game before the end of next <laughs> yeah. year. Just All right, Jordan. It's time to delve into some rapid fire. Yeah, sure. And we'll learn more about you as a human being. I learned a lot sure, about you already. 
love yep. horror, love history, all good stuff. You get a crazy head. I love it. My head's all right. It's a bit crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, I, I like I said, it takes a special kind of person to make a horror game. I mean, game dev yeah, alone, does. but horror, I think, is uniquely special yeah. because it's it's a lot. And I do it's, I do yeah. admire you for that endeavor. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, the big guys won't do it. So that's some, true. Someone's yeah. gotta do it. That's true. I appreciate that for keeping my favorite genre alive and well it's in good hands i got you i got you you got me all right jordan um let's see where to begin this is a fun one um let's say you could you had a chance to take a cutesy kid-friendly franchise like an animal crossing or a mario and corrupt it completely into a horror <laughs> franchise you're given free reign like all right jordan it's like dealer's choice like whatever you pick you can have it and you can make it as terrifying as you like uh, what would you pick or, or even a, a child's cartoon yeah well, what I would you being, i think you being do? trapped on an island with uh anthrop- anthropomorphic animals your whole existence is already <laughs> yeah while horror. being in debt to someone it's like <laughs> yeah. servitude yeah, yeah. It, it, the horror writes itself already I mean, the undertones of animal crossing are <laughs> they're already there and then you try to leave the island by boat and the only other yeah. place we can go is another island with more animals <laughs> yeah yeah you're not doing much it's like all right i'm just yeah. gonna make animal crossing <laughs> yeah. oh, gosh. Well, that's... oh that's great <laughs> I'll tell you what, um, mm. I was thinking about Luigi's Mansion the other day. Oh, okay. And I, was, I completely forgot about that game. But that is like basically survival horror. It is, which yeah. I never even really thought about when I was a kid playing it. But it's basically like Resident Evil style progression mm-hmm. where you go through the mansion and you unlock doors. Um, but that, that, that already, already exists. So right, but you, could, but you could like <laughs> take the cartoony element out of it Oof. like you go into a mansion you find like mario's corpse and mm. <laughs> luigi was just on like a plumbing job and yeah it all seemed normal at first and then yeah. have they yeah. ever done that like have them go on a plumbing job they should do you know that they never should actually legit, plumbed, have they? <laughs> they should legit have mario like okay i'm done with peach for a little bit <laughs> Let me just go on a, yeah. on, a, on a nice little plumbing job for someone, and then yeah, he, some he's hygiene. Never, he's happen. never actually plumbed, has he? He hasn't yeah. plumbed. We've never seen him plumb. Wow, I never thought of that. That'd be an interesting yeah. game. You have to yeah. fulfill contracts, plumbing contracts, and oh, that's that's the horror. <laughs> Nine to five from Mario. Go to <laughs> <laughs> he has a real job. <laughs> go to His bills house. are due. Yeah, oh yeah. My God. holy yeah, that's shit! My, that's that's my answer. Nine to five. Mario. At the next the next game jam you're at, Jordan, just, yeah. <laughs> just get that going as soon as possible. Uh, um, on that's the other funny. side of that, if you could work on an existing horror franchise mm. of your choosing, which would that be? Mm. You know what? I I, I think that. Resident Evil is in a, re- a really good place right now. Mm-hmm. I feel like Capcom has a pretty solid idea. Although yeah. you don't know, they could always fuck it up again. But right, <laughs> they've, done, they've done that before. Yeah, maybe um, like in one more sequel, like that's how the trend is. Yeah, like they make three yeah, or exactly. four good game, and then they kind of fuck it yeah. up completely. So <laughs> we'll get yeah. back to like you know watermelon bicep Chris in no time. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like that's the way it's already going. But um, <laughs> but then you have Silent Hill, which is just like in the gutter in the sewer oh, God. So i feel like if i was going to you know try and fix in quotes anything mm. my my brain w- would be best served uh with silent hill but yeah it's yeah. you know it's funny looking back at all of the western developed silent hill games like they all had something that wasn't terrible about them it was just they were trying too hard to mimic what Silent Hill was supposed to be. Like they yeah, thought yeah. there was a blueprint yeah, when there really yeah. wasn't a blueprint. No. To what that wasn't. series was. And they thought, well, 
okay, mental trauma guy with the pyramid <laughs> with a sword thing. I think, yeah, that's what they thought. Literally just mental right. trauma. Um, <laughs> like, spooky transitions and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. weird fleshy creatures and fog. That's yeah, all and yeah. a siren. That's it. That's yeah. all it is. And we can build yeah. around that, but that's I ne- yeah. I never actually played those uh the, the Western ones, but um God. like yeah, I've I've just watched videos and kind of <laughs> they they really seem like they've missed the mark completely. Really, mm-hmm. But it's the, the best it, description is that they're cover it's like a cover band. Yeah, yeah, that's the impression yeah. that I got. Yeah. The thing about the, the the classic Silent Hills, it's like a lot of their what's special about them is like these really kind of intangible things like the sound design mm. and it's like the atmosphere. It's, it's not mm-hmm. just the fog. The fog is part of it, but right. it's not just that. It, it's, it's a lot of sound design. It's Akira Yamaoka. Mm-hmm. It's, what else is it? It's, um, even it's a lot of ha- things that they don't show. Yeah. Even just having him like, Oh, don't worry. He's on the, he's on like, he's doing the soundtrack. It's fine. That isn't, that isn't enough though. Yeah, I feel it's, it's not, about, yeah creating those special moments in the yeah. game but that's a whole different conversation um yeah. <laughs> <Tangent>. what is <laughs> yeah seriously um what is the dumbest way you've ever injured yourself well i've been very lucky to to be relatively injury free mm-hmm. <laughs> considering <laughs> that like oh man considering that i've i've basically like trained martial arts my whole life and oh wow adult. okay and to you like, yeah so I'm, I'm very lucky i've never actually broken broken a bone mm. a lot of a lot of like ligament tears a lot of mm. overuse injuries um actually here's one i got one for you okay <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay well there's a there's a there's like a punching bag um, hung up like in my backyard and let's just say that it wasn't installed properly and it, it it's basically back. held uh, worse it's, it's held up by a steel beam and uh, oh basically god I, I punched it a bit too hard and the, the steel beam came off and basically concussed me and i was like half knocked out like no one it was just me by myself like just trying oh, to get a workout no. and, the bag. and i hit it too hard and the whole steel beam weighted down by by a heavy box bag fell on my head and i was literally just like on the ground like uh, like <laughs> dazed and Holy um shit. yeah i went to hospital i shouldn't have even been driving after that to be honest because i was definitely a bit like half concussed so like, maybe <laughs> that's probably drove you know, like, from. <laughs> <laughs> so that was um, i think that's your origin story that's like your game dev <laughs> origin story <laughs> yeah yeah that's yeah, that when like really, the psyche yeah. split and you're like, I'm going to make <laughs> games. That's a totally yeah, exactly. insane career to yeah. pursue. It's like going to yeah. drive me totally insane and burn me up yeah. before I'm 40. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was definitely like the, just the most ridiculous thing I've ever done, for sure. <laughs> Luckily, there was no lingering headache or anything. Mm, good. That, that was just of. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, uh, is cereal a soup? Hmm. Um, cereal a soup mm. no soup has to be warm unless you warm okay. up the cereal yeah what is that oatmeal if, yeah <laughs> if you warm up if you put the cereal in the microwave right then it can be soup then i'll then i'll allow it to <laughs> then you'll allow it okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right fair enough um a pineapple <laughs> on pizza yes or no Oh my god! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's yeah. acceptable. Yeah, yeah. Um, the power of flight or invisibility? Hmm. Flight, flight. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what what am I what am I going to see when I'm in, like what? Why be invisible? Like what what am I going to see? What what am I going to see that I'm not already going to see? Not be invisible. And do I really, really want to see that? <laughs> you see, that is a fair answer because I, you know, I usually tend to lean more towards invisibility and yeah. people think that <laughs> I'm a pervert or just, I would do bad things. 
I feel like you would regret like 90% of the things that you would see while being invisible. <laughs> so <laughs> would you would you rather fight 10 horse-sized ducks or a hundred duck-sized horses? Hmm. The small horses. I mean, mm. I think if a duck was that big, that would be pretty dangerous. Mm. Ducks are like ducks are like psychos as it is, and, and they're not yeah. even big. So, could you imagine if they were like, yeah, yeah? So, <laughs> <laughs> what word best describes you when you've had too much to drink? <laughs> Just have to remember to last uh, Saturday. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, a bit too, how do I put this? A bit too trusting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. In that, yeah. you just believe. I'm a very things. friendly drunk. Friendly drunk. Got yeah, it, yeah. got it, got it, got it. And certain yeah. things might be happening where I'll look back the next day and I'll be like, that was weird. That was weird. And I should have just left. <laughs> Why am I in this guy's house? <laughs> oh my God. Um, <laughs> oh, was that you? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, would you rather have one real get out of jail free card? Or a key that would unlock any door. Hmm. Like a, a literal, like, if I go to jail, I'll be let out. You just show the card. It's hmm. like, oh, you're going to put me in jail? Here's my card. And what was the other I'm one? Done. Or a key to unlock any door. Well, except for your jail cell, obviously. Uh, so. <laughs> um, I think it'd be good to have that get out mm-hmm. of jail free card. Mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't intend on committing any uh, hate right but just in case crimes, but just, yeah, yeah just in case. i feel like yeah. just in case someone wronged you yeah a little too mm. much and you want yeah. to exact some measure of vengeance but not you know not inflict bodily harm but do something that would land you in yeah. jail for a small yeah. amount of time like if someone's like watching like, my trailer you know, and they ask right. for Battlefield 2042. Right, they used to their car on fire, yeah. you know. Well, yeah, <laughs> not yeah, a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah, I'll take the card. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. What was the last game you played that had a really big impact <clears throat> on you? Um, God, I, I really just wish I had more time to play. I, mm. I've, I've been playing like no games over the past year, mm. which I really oh, you know. hate. Reach back. I've been trying to play through. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've been trying to play through uh, Metroid Dread, which I love. Mm. Um, it's just really hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's another. laughs> um, last game. Mm. Yeah, I think that chasing Emmy is a little bit much. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm just like yeah. like I lo- I love the game to death, but mm. before you get like jacked up on your abilities, it's like it's a little bit overwhelming yeah, yeah and it's a little bit repetitive right how many times you have to do it um, right but it's, it's still a great game mm-hmm. i think the last game the last game that i really like was absolutely enthralled in mm. and like like took like my life away from me was probably red dead 2 and i think that's wow was probably for a lot of people because that was a while that was like already three years ago Mm -hmm. that was probably like the last time in my life i really like had that commitment to like (laughs) enjoy a game game. yeah and before that it was probably breath of the wild Mm. um ever since then there's been good games that i've played but nothing that's really really stuck with me well that's that's your reward for finishing your game next year Oh uh, man, I'm gonna take six months off, and I'm just gonna play just play Breath of the Wild too. Yeah, it's like it's it'll be there yeah. waiting for you. Yeah, when your game yeah. comes out, you can yeah, ignore hopefully. all the feedback, all reviews. Like I don't care yeah, what you think about it's my game. Not my problem anymore. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you hate it. I don't care. I'm playing Breath of the Wild too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, what was the last terrible game you mm. played? Like a game that you gave an honest shot and you were just, this is not a good game. 
Hmm. It's just not good. This might be a bit controversial. Ooh, I love a hot take. I actually was recently going through a Castlevania kick. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was playing through some of the old Castlevania games. Mm -hmm. um, I was just really craving it for some reason because I haven't played those mm -hmm. games since I was a kid. It's a great series. And then the Advanced Collection came out. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And I was like, because those games are like fairly short. And I was like, this is like a right. perfect, like short game I can kind of play. I can't really yeah. commit to anything too long. And um, I played through Circle of the Moon and uh, it was okay. I, I was enjoying it for like the first like hour. And then after, and then I some, for some reason I committed to it and I finished it. And then afterwards I was like, that was kind of shit. Is it, like, the is it the card system that turned you off? It's the cards or? and it's the, the sprinting and the level the design sprinting. is terrible. Yep. The level design was really, really bad because <laughs> the only game out of those three that I've ever actually played was uh, Aria, Aria of, so of Sorrow. That's a good one. And I love that. That's like one of my favorite childhood games. And, yeah. um, and I was like, oh, I'll play through the, these first two because I've never actually played them. And um, I was like, wow, Circle of the Moon was really not great. And for some reason, I just subjected myself to it even though I had so much other work to do, I was just like, no, I'm this. God. There's so many great games that are out there and you're playing. I, mean, I, I play old games all the time. I'm guilty of that. I only really play old games, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Like, it's funny. Like, I bought Deathloop, Guards of the Galaxy, um, Tribes of Midgard, and some other games that were on sale. And I bought a new monitor. I'm like, ooh, I can play all my PS1 games and I'll look really <sighs> nice and clean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. in like 4k <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, just, and i'm going through my library and i just found this thing called steam rom manager mm. so i'm importing all my like ps2 games into steam <laughs> yeah. I'm like i want to play dark cloud i'm gonna play like I'll tell you what, Rose. <laughs> a lot of time like a lot of the time like going through that management process of like organizing like ROMs or like mm -hmm. is, is funner than actually playing yes. the games. <laughs> just like just seeing that, that pristine yeah. library, like this is my collection. <laughs> and you have yeah, this exactly. pride. Yeah. Are you gonna yeah. play it? No? But I have no, all the Neo Geo. Definitely games. not. <laughs> They're there when I want them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I went like, through I went through a phase like that as well. It's like you gotta get them all. It's like, yeah, yeah it's, I have it's all like the crack. virtual board games because <laughs> I want to play and what are yeah. two good ones sometimes you know like yeah. wario or mario's tennis um <laughs> you know i've always wondered right <laughs> playing a game as a game dev do you turn yeah. that part of your brain off <laughs> no. or are you like critiquing because in my professional life i'm an events mm. planner uh -huh. manager yeah. so when i go to like a concert or an event I'm always looking for flaws. Like this is wrong. This is wrong. This, this, this queue sucks. This check-in system is garbage. And I can't turn that part of my brain off. Is that what it's like for game devs when you play a game? It's like this, this UI is trash or like, what oh is that God. like? I'm just curious. It's, it's like, to be honest with you, it's basically permanently ruined my ability <laughs> to play games. Like, and I wish that was not the case. And I know there's some oh, devs horrible. out there who can switch it off because mm -hmm. they'll like be talking about on Twitter how they play this new game. I'm like, I can't, I just can't turn it off. Um, it's really bad. I think the only games I can turn it off for, actually, there's none. Mm. <laughs> now that I think about it, even like playing Metroid Dread, which is like a great game, like I'm, I'm right. loving it. I'm just like constantly thinking about the level design and the progression and just like constantly i can't turn it off whereas when when you're like <laughs> when you're like unwashed <laughs> when you're like uncursed <laughs> and you're just like a normal person you can just play and you don't like you don't unless you're like a hardcore gamer you don't like like you you'll play a game you'll be like oh this is amazing but you can't really pinpoint why it's just like everything right. culminating it's the level design it's the atmosphere sure but when when you're a developer it's just like you're just picking apart everything and it's just like the, uh, yeah it's so unhealthy <laughs> Yeah, so I, I don't know if I can ever enjoy a game again. So. Oh, good lord! <laughs> um, yeah. And finally, I think I have to ask you this question: What scares you? 
scares me. What makes you get a little? Mm. What what's the what's the ooga booga in your life, Jordan? In my life, <laughs> my life has a lot of ooga boogas. <laughs> um, nothing fictional at this point, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm scared of I'm scared of failure. Mm. I'll say that I'm scared of putting my life into something for four years and have it fail. Mm. But I think that's I think that's a reasonable fear. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's why I work nonstop to mm-hmm. the point of unhealthiness sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess that's I guess a lot of indie devs can relate to that. Like, I think that's yeah. kind of almost a universal experience, especially mm-hmm. when it's a solo affair. It's like and, yeah, your first game too, no less. Yeah, exactly. You wanna you wanna you wanna leave a good impression, you wanna open up uh, yeah more opportunities and, and more doors and, and, and do more of this out. in the future it's like yeah exactly yeah so yeah, it's it it. a lot of pressure yeah yeah, yeah. well fortunately i i have to say judge about how the game looks and plays and having spoken to you for the last hour i think you have something really special thank here you. yeah thank and you. i really cannot wait to play it awesome next year yeah, i'm glad to hear yeah so with that where can we follow you and conscript Give us all yeah, the social sure. media links. So sure. spiel. Yep. That. <laughs> so hit me. Yeah. Um, you can follow Conscript on Twitter, which is at Conscript Game. Um, you can just check out the website, conscriptgame.com, and that will take you to hmm. everything. You can join the Discord from there. Um, wishlist the game on Steam, pretty hmm. please. Yes. I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> because that is, you know, I know a lot of people wonder why indie devs just constantly won't shut up about wishlisting their game. The algorithm, baby. It's the algorithm, yeah. Exactly yeah. Right. It's basically the only way you can like predict success in, yeah. this, in, this, in this industry. So that would be very appreciated if you could do that on Steam. Um, also, there's a demo out, which mm-hmm. was recently updated a few weeks ago. And um, it's fairly like, it's a fairly big chunk of gameplay. It's like about an hour at least. So, you know, give it a go. Give me your feedback. Mm. And yeah, have fun with it. And I'll, I'll look forward to seeing what everyone thinks about it. There we go. I think that's having a demo there goes a long way because you kind yeah. of earn that wish list because like exactly right. You're yeah. you're you're showing a piece of yourself. Here's a part yeah. of my soul, yeah. people. Yeah. Take it in. Exactly. Exactly. And want right. it. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh and with that, Jordan, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun, dude. I mean, no, oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Game looks great. Thank you. you know your stuff and i cannot wait thanks awesome. for coming on the show i really appreciate it and thank you listeners for joining us once again on the dual screens podcast the world's number one indie dev interview podcast probably <laughs> until next time war what is it good for for making some boss ass game premises that's what's good for that's right exactly <laughs> all right guys take care see ya